there are non communicable diseases which uh, would lead to large number of morbidity mortality but uh, there was this uh, gentleman called O'Neill who has published this report who was a parliamentarian in UK and has said that there will be uh, trillions of dollars which will get invested because of antimicrobial resistance. There were millions of deaths which will happen because of antimicrobial resistance which is going to surpass the morbidity and mortality and the cost of care of non-communicable diseases that is cancer, diabetes, kidney diseases and heart diseases. So AMR now ranks first with respect to morbidity and mortality and the investment which is going to happen in AMR that would be close to a GDP spent of almost 16 to 17 countries. It is that big, it is that huge an issue, it is a public health agenda, it is a patient safety agenda and it is an agenda for every uh, healthcare provider, it, every citizen, that all policy makers, all those who advocate, they all need to come together and formulate something which is going to be much more meaningful for the next generation. So trend is almost similar throughout the country and in LMIC. Um, the more the patient gets uh, hospitalized, admitted, they are pumped in with antibiotic and it is more critical in a critical care unit because they come with lots of comorbidities, they are already hospitalized in various hospitals, they have taken some bit of treatment and then they shift to various from primary care to secondary care to tertiary care. So it is very critical in uh, all uh, intensive care units and high dependency units and that is where <coughs> ICMR also has a collaborative of almost 56 uh, hospitals and the report which comes out which they release almost every year is very, very alarming. It is equivalently alarming in pediatric, in obs and gynae, in any of the cardiovascular or other illnesses, it is alarming in geriatric setting. So it is encompassing from birth to death. And that is how grave this problem is, that is how the huge magnitude that attention needs to be drawn to this particular agenda. And uh, everybody from the healthcare to the community needs to be engaged to be able to make a difference. As an institution, we have worked quite a bit with the government. We have worked quite a bit with the government of Kerala for almost 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. We are working with other seven states now. <clears throat> the point is that uh, we, the, we, might have, we might be losing the battle in critical care units and tertiary care hospital. So what is now most critical is to work in the community, in the secondary care hospital. So everybody needs to improve their practices. There is over the counter sales of uh, antibiotic which is happening, which is unregulated. There is uh, laboratories which gives microbiology reports for the, um, for the drugs which cannot be tested. They don't have the test kit, but they give the reports. Most of the laboratories are not accredited. They are not managed by microbiologists. They are managed by microbiology technicians who don't know how to give the reports. There is unwarranted uh, irrational medicines which have been written by the doctors. There is uh, one health approach where the environment uh, also, all expired drugs and uh, uh, the practices of uh, water, hygiene, sanitation is not practiced at all. There is a problem with large number of antibiotic being given as growth promoters to animals and um, animal husbandry consumes uh, 60 to 80 percent of the antibiotics which are prescribed. So the problem is uh, almost uh, everywhere. And that is how uh, as one nation, one world, one health agenda, they all need to come together to be able to establish a good practice. Otherwise, we have possibly lost the battle. Uh, the attention right now should be at the primary care and secondary care that they do this uh, prescriptions properly. The over-the-counter regulations have to come in. The labs needs to be accredited and then there is uh, there should be an equivalent uh, uh, attention to be given for animal husbandry as well as for environmental health.
it is extremely important that the patient need to be educated <coughs> they need to be empowered and that will only happen if they are asking right questions so uh, generally antibiotics are considered to be magic bullet and they are given for almost every thing which need not be the practice they are given because they are not very clear about the infection control practices so the patient should definitely ask the the doctors and the healthcare providers to wash their hands every time which they touch touch any of the services touch any other patients touch any of the monitors biomedical equipments and then touch the patients again or high touch surfaces like bed rails door knobs so whenever this happens they need to wash their hands washing hands also is not just enough washing hands properly with the six steps every time with the appropriate detergent appropriate antiseptic agent is important which is generally 60 70% isopropyl alcohol with 0.5% chlorhexidine other than that there has to be a medical asepsis and surgical asepsis precautions should be adhered to the disinfection practices of surfaces with either um, intermediate level high level or low level disinfections at appropriate location should be practiced so the patient should know all this and should ask these questions he should not just feel that when he if he ask the nurse would get upset and the doctor should upset get upset because ultimately it's his or her health plus when they are prescribed a lot of antibiotics they need to ask what why they have been prescribed because until unless that is also challenged that is uh, important right now a lot of them they take antibiotics at home because antibiotic was present at home somebody was taking it or some of their relatives so left over antibiotics are given are taken consumed which is a wrong practice so they should only take medicines which is prescribed by the doctors and not because some antibiotic is present at home many a times they are given antibiotics antimicrobials but they recover mm -hmm. and they stop uh, taking the further uh, antibiotics and that is disastrous again so uh, a course of the appropriate course dose duration uh, frequency has to be always adhered to and this all practice should uh, be basically improved yeah there are many day to day situations where antibiotics doesn't work and why do why do they not work because we pump in antibiotic immediately and that's not appropriate we should take appropriate samples send it for microbiology to culture because every hospital has a different bug so it is not that the bugs remain the same from uh, kashmir to kerala the bug remains uh, very different from one hospital which and the another hospital which could be just adjacent sharing a building or sharing a boundary wall so the local antibiogram is important based on that antibiotic policy is important so uh, it is very critical that uh, they the the healthcare provider knows that and based on that he or she prescribes and uh, it is also important that uh, the healthcare providers are all the capacity is built they are all trained they are adequately um, been exposed to the mechanism of action the pharmacokinetics the dynamics the bioequivalence the optimization and that is where rationality of the prescription will happen and that should be one of the most important agenda for all the doctors uh, within the community many a times the antibiotics are given because the patient is demanding for it and no doctor wants to not retain the patient mm -hmm. that's not the proper way that the antibiotic should be basically prescribed many a times there are newer antibiotic is given uh, or the mechanism of action was not known but still because it was new it is um, there needs to be difference in the prescription because from the secondary to tertiary care those has been prescribed so unwarranted irrational inappropriate prescription should be avoided and that is the clear message for all healthcare providers all doctors if we have to save this generation if we have to prepare a world which is uh, livable for the next generation then antimicrobial resistance is an agenda which needs to have adequate and urgent attention and if we don't improve 
the surgery surgical site programs would crash because uh, if there is a sepsis you won't be left with l not no good antibiotic unfortunately the drug companies are also not manufacturing so there are no pipeline right. of right. antibiotic so scenario is very grim but it's not doomsday we all need to improve we all need to have a close monitoring and watch and that is what the doctors should do a rational appropriate warranted prescription should only be given.